Time travel. Who among us doesn't dig the idea of time travel? Dare I say no one? Now, some scientists say the time is drawing nearer than you think, in which time travel could become a real reality, guys. I just said real reality. <laughs> That's uh, not redundant at all. Joining us to discuss all things time travel from science fiction to science fact are on set. We have the lovely Kara Santa Maria, HuffPost's senior science correspondent. And in our Google Hangout, we're joined by Ronald Mallett, professor of physics at the University of Connecticut, and he's also an author. Nick Hurwich and Phil Hornshaw, co-authors of So You Created a Wormhole, and Andrew Basiago, president of Project Pegasus in Vancouver, Washington. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna start out our conversation with you, Ronald. Is time travel possible? Yes, from the standpoint of Einstein's uh, theories of relativity, time travel is completely possible. Uh, there's actually two different theories that Einstein developed. What most people don't realize is that time travel to the future really has been already achieved in a number of different ways. Uh, Einstein's special theory of relativity tells us the faster you move, the more time slows down. So it's time for a moving clock actually slows down. And this is actually seen uh, every day at the Large Hadron Collider in CERN. Every time they turn on the machine, there are subatomic particles that normally can only exist for uh, fractions of a second. But when they speed them up, these particles can live 10, 20 times longer than they normally can. Do you personally think that we will be able to get a craft to travel faster than the speed of light? No. Uh, the thing is, is that when people talk about uh, the speed of light and try to talk about the light barrier, they think of it as being like the sound barrier. Okay. Uh, there's actually a law of physics that prevents you from going at the speed of light, let alone going past the speed of light. And, and what people don't realize is that it's not something that oh, eventually will have the technology to overcome. It's actually built into the laws of nature. Our two authors, I'd love to ask uh, Nick and Phil, you know, what do you think uh, some of the practical applications would be for time travel, whether or not we're talking about speed of light or, or if we're talking about some other form? Well... Practical applications, I mean, everyone wants to hop into immediately um, fixing things in time, uh, you know, going back in time to kill a ruthless dictator or someone or, or prevent a horrible plague uh, is a big one. But that, that opens up um, uh, myriad opportunities for uh, dangers. Um, Ray Bradbury could, taught us that. Ray Bradbury <laughs> taught us that. Do not yes. step on a butterfly when you're yeah. visiting the dinosaurs. Right. You don't want right. to do anything that would alter the course of history. You know, that could even change things so much that it would prevent you in the future from being able to travel back to the past and uh, change the very thing you just changed, which in lay terms is a paradox. Um, well, so... Uh, I mean, there are other things like uh, the, you know, Biff Tannen Sports Almanac perk of time travel, where you know all the results of every sporting event that has happened. Um, and so when you go back in time, you can then bet on those games and become rich. I would love to hear your story about your experience, because I know that um, that observation uh, definitely comes into play quite a bit. Well, my position is that Time travel was achieved secretly in the U.S. defense technical community um, in the late 1960s, and that by 1970, uh, under the aegis of DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the U.S. government was secretly involved in actually eight different modalities of what we would call quantum access, which would include both physically sending somebody to the past or future, I was one of the American school children that was brought into Project Pegasus initially when I teleported between the old Curtis Wright Aeronautical Company facility in Woodridge, New Jersey, to Santa Fe, New Mexico with my late father. The hallmarks of science are verifiability and reproducibility. Uh, that's what gives it its power. Remember when I was talking about the uh, experiment that was done at the Naval Observatory, the one in which they put an atomic clock on the plane to verify Einstein's uh, claim that time slows down for a moving clock. That experiment wasn't just simply done one time. That was done again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And it can be done independently. It doesn't have to be done here in the United States. It can be done anywhere in any country. Uh, that's, re that's the reproducibility. And also it's the verifiability. I mean, that is to say that I can make a claim 
But the thing is, is that if people read my published articles, if someone in China, or someone in uh, Greenland mm -hmm. wants to reproduce what I do, they can do it. I mean, it's something that they can do. It's reproducible and it's verifiable. Um, let me that, ask you. May, that's that's yeah. a bit, but uh, one more thing. The other thing is, is that I think that one of the other problems with uh, the government that is, I think, really important to understand is the government is notorious for not being able to keep secrets. <laughs>